Hey everybody and welcome back into Crypto Explained. I'm Max Templin. The What Is series rolls on today. We're going to do another one and today we're talking about Polkadot. So again, we're going to dive into the specifics about the technology, how it works, uh, its vision for the future, what it's trying to do, and then who's behind this project, whether I invest in it personally, the reasons behind that decision. And then I'm also going to talk about what you should look for if you're thinking about investing in the DOT token and uh, the Polkadot network overall. So Polkadot was a fascinating story this year. Uh, came out with a full head of steam right away, launched in August 2020 this year. And it was out for what, a couple weeks? And then all of a sudden we look at the overall, you know, market cap rankings of the entire crypto industry. Polkadot's in the top 10. It happened out of nowhere, caught a lot of people off guard. And we can really tell that they have funding. They have this idea that they're definitely gonna put in place. And a lot of people have been paying, paying attention to it even before the launch. So let's talk about what it is, because I think that the reason that it had such a hot start and really just launched up with the, both its price and its overall market cap, as we saw, the reason that happened so fast is because of who's behind this project. Um, this isn't, you know, this isn't a project out of nowhere. People have been talking about this for a while because of the fact of who's involved. So we talk a lot about, about on this channel, Ethereum, uh, what Ethereum was able to accomplish with their overall network. Uh, people being able to add Ethereum tokens on top of the Ethereum blockchain and Vitalik Buterin's overall idea of what he wants to create with the Ethereum network. It was very revolutionary, uh, but he didn't do it alone. He had other people within his business that he worked with closely and that were involved with the whole process. And that's the reason that it was so su successful. A lot of different ideas bouncing off of each other. So two guys I want to talk about in particular are Charles Hoskinson and Gavin Wood, because these guys were in the room with Vitalik right away. Um, CEO and CTO respectively of Ethereum, co-founders of Ethereum, and then they broke off and created their own projects. So Charles Hoskinson went on to create Cardano and Gavin Wood went on to create Polkadot. So Polkadot and Cardano are very similar in the fact that they want to become this internet of blockchains where you have an entire network where blockchains can be accessed. They're all interoperable. They all are able to communicate with, with each other. You can transfer uh, different cryptocurrencies across blockchains. That's the overall ambitious idea of these projects. They're having a little bit of a different approach in how they're trying to achieve that, but that's the overall goal, the overall goal of both Polkadot and Cardano. So Polkadot's interesting because their main thing is that they thought Ethereum obviously was amazing um, with Gavin Wood being so involved with, with the overall um, creation of Ethereum. They, they wanna build on that a lot. That, that's definitely kind of the father of this whole idea and these are just kind of the branching out and trying to improve upon little things that they notice. But if we're being honest, I, I love Ethereum. Ethereum has a great future as far as the price of the ETH token. It's really gonna blow up, I really believe this. But it does have some issues with scalability. I think that's pretty undeniable. The fact that Buterin is trying to release this Ethereum 2.0, where he fixes a lot of the scalability concerns for the future, that's just proof that they do have some scalability issues. You have all these Ethereum tokens, that are being put right on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Um, definitely for the future, depending on how many projects are gonna be involved with this, it definitely has some scalability concerns. So what Polkadot is trying to do to fix this uh, concern going forward is that they have two different types of blockchains working together. So they have a main chain, a main blockchain that is a relay chain. So the relay chain is not editable. The relay chain is what it is, and that's kind of the foundation for everything on top of that. And then with along with the relay chains, they have parachains. So parachains are other people's projects that they're able to add to the Polkadot network, but they're not the same blockchain. It's, it's gonna be the relay chain at the foundation and then the parachains go on top of it and work together with it and are interoperable together. So that's an interesting idea because then you're really allowing the people who are creating these projects on the parachains to have their own ideas. Uh, whether they have different ideas about how it's governed, um, how it's distributed with this overall circulation, any of those kind of things they can decide for themselves. But the relay chain itself and the Polkadot network itself is never gonna change. Uh, that, that is a, the foundational element upon which everything can be built. So overall, I think what I see here is if we make like a sports reference here, you know when there's a really good uh, coaching staff and they've been successful for a long time, and then you see the head coach stays where he is, but the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator might try to uh, look for their own head coaching jobs in, in other places. Uh, if this happens, it's not always guaranteed that 
the success that they had at this first team is going to translate into their own, even though they were involved in this system in the first place. I really like using that analogy because I think it makes a lot of sense. And if you're a football fan, you know guys like Kyle Shanahan were eventually, they were with the Falcons first, uh, offensive coordinator with the Falcons, brought them to a Super Bowl. And then he goes to the 49ers and is having immense success over there as a play caller. So you can tell that he might, Dan Quinn, the head coach of the Falcons, is no longer there. So you can tell that Kyle Shanahan might have been the reason that the Falcons were so successful and that offense was so unstoppable. And he goes to another place and he's able to replicate and improve upon that success. So whether or not Gavin Wood and Charles Hoskinson are going to be able to do that after being part of the Ethereum team and then branching out to Cardano and Polkadot, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I know that is frustrating. I say that a lot on this channel, but I'm just, I, I think of myself as a responsible investor. I don't look at things and say, I know for a fact that this is the future. I know for a fact that there is nothing that can get in the way of this being the greatest project of all time. If people say that, they're not being truthful because none of us know. This is an evolving space. And all of the, the, re the reason I call them projects is because they set out to try to accomplish a goal. But until they accomplish the goal, we don't know if the network and the system and the software is able, is capable of pulling this off. So with Polkadot, we just really have to see how the parachains and the relay chain is able to uh, communicate with each other, able to work together with each other and to see if that is a way that it can be, the scalability will never be a problem because you can add other blockchains on top of the main blockchain and you're never gonna have to worry about being bogged down with just too much data. Uh, they, they communicate with each other, they are connected with each other, but they are not the same thing. So that's what I like about Polkadot overall. I think it really has a lot of ideas that haven't been tried before. And the one thing that is absolutely for sure uh, with this whole internet of blockchains movement, whoever is able to pull this off first is going to change the world. It is really gonna bring all of these technologies together in a way that is gonna change the way we do business, change the way we do our finance, uh, change the way we communicate with each other. It, it's gonna be able to really increase security, a lot less people hacking into people's bank accounts and all of those kind of things. Um, it, it's, it's gonna be very good for the world whenever it happens. But I can't guarantee you that Cardano is gonna be that. I can't guarantee you that Polkadot's gonna be that. But I can tell you that the people behind this are the leading experts in this. And that, that's, that doesn't mean that they know exactly how to pull this off. It just means that they're the most equipped to try. So I am excited to see where Polkadot goes from here. It's gonna be very interesting next couple of years and to see how it kind of plays off of Cardano because one thing that Polkadot claims is that they're not trying to compete with these other uh, networks. They're just trying to bring everyone together onto their network and make it so that even Bitcoin, even Ethereum, uh, even those blockchains are able to communicate and be connected uh, through this Polkadot network uh, and have everything kind of work together. That's their overall goal. Can they pull it off? I don't know. I, I can't tell you in this video, but the things we're gonna have to look for in the next couple of years are whether or not we see a lot of projects uh, pick the Polkadot network over becoming an Ethereum token, pick the Polkadot network over, you know, trying to work with Cardano, any of those things. If Polkadot becomes kind of the leader and if you're creating your own blockchain and your own crypto and you, you think blockchain, or sorry, if you, you think Polkadot is the way to go, then that's going to be a sign that Polkadot may be pulling ahead and trying to uh, bring this all together. But I can't say for sure in this video that that's going to happen. We just have to wait and see. Uh, Polkadot's going to be talked about a lot more on this channel, so we'll see where it goes from here. It is, I, I overall view myself as more of a Bitcoiner and the altcoins I just pay attention to to try to make money to put into Bitcoin. Uh, at least that's my strategy for now. That may change uh, in years to come. But overall, if you look at just the properties of what Bitcoin is for a store of value, store of value I think we're going to see the biggest price spike in Bitcoin uh, over any of these altcoins, at least in the near future. But that doesn't mean that something's going to come along and just totally revolutionize the way we look at crypto. And Polkadot could be that, but it's going to have to prove that it can actually do what it says it's going to do. So that's the video for today, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in so far, and I appreciate all of the engagement. Uh, definitely leave a comment if I didn't answer something for you and you had a question about specifics. I'd be happy to engage in that conversation. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I've appreciated all the subs so far. It helps me out tremendously. 
So again, really, really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Also hit the notification bell so you get an update every time I post a new episode. We're gonna be doing a lot more episodes the next couple of months. It's gonna get very exciting 2020 going into 2021 in the entire crypto industry. Thanks guys and see you soon, take care.